Hello everyone and welcome to Jungle Man Tech where we specialize in Age of Agri Gravity and DIY and in today's video we are going to be upgrading and replacing this water cooled condensing unit. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In today's video, we're gonna be upgrading and replacing this condensing unit. We found this system with a large leak in it. And not only that, we have a few leaks down here and it's just time to change this thing. We got missing covers here, wires exposed. This compressor was already on its last legs with this hard start kit. Look at this connection here i mean just using random pipe sizes to make this thing work to gain pressure look at this thing i mean this thing is as bad as it gets down there in the corner we have rusted service valves if you look here we have leak lock which is would most likely contaminate the system this blue stuff on here so they're trying to stop leaks just like down here if you look at it look at all that blue stuff i mean it's just honestly a complete mess it's time for this thing to go this is not the correct liquid line valve look at the, the pipe size difference they're just putting quarter inch to three eighths to five eight i mean come on guys look at that thing there's also a kink in the pipe in the back right here it's pretty bad. I mean, it's just time for this thing to go. Look at this suction line. Look at that liquid line. It, it's just time to go. The power, one of the power here coming from the thermostat, they just cable. Here's a defrost clock. It's just seriously time for this thing to go. Let's get started. Power switch is off. This thing is just a complete mess. I mean, look at this line right next to the electrical. I mean, something is bound, bound to go wrong here. I'm also getting rid of any flares here. These flares tend to leak. All that kind of stuff just creates problems. So the best bet is to braze all our connections and just junk this thing. This thing is gone, man. It, it's just so bad. I mean, so many of these units are so junked up. It's just time for an upgrade. As of right now, we have two water. This is the water cool condenser. This valve and this valve is closed. So we shut off the water, we shut off the power and the refrigerant inside the system is currently already recovered. Here's our new condensing unit. This thing is super nice. And we even have digital controls here. We have a digital electronic unit controller by Emerson. Got a nice Copeland compressor. We got a liquid receiver, water cool condenser. We have a suction transducer. And we also have a high side pressure control. This thing is pretty awesome. And it comes with the water regulating valve. This is gonna be a very nice upgrade. The only thing when it comes to this, it's tricky is the wiring. As we have a completely different controls here. It seems as if it would be, would be the same, but it's not. And I'll explain why I spend quite some time trying to figure out how the controller works. There's very poor instructions. If you look at behind the covers, a couple things are not properly addressed. But if you download the manual online and you compare the two, you'll figure it out. It was just tricky and honestly, not a fan. So, as of right now, I got the water valves closed, like I mentioned, the power is off and the refrigerant's recovered. I'm gonna have to cut this line here and I have to cut this line here for the water. Let's start by disconnecting the water lines. All right, so as far as this right now, we shut this off, we can cut right here. As far as this valve, look, this thing is like literally right at the unit. I'd need to cut this. Hopefully I can cut it right here. If not, I mean this whole thing is a wild mess. If you trace this out, it could actually tease into this. And this it comes through here, goes around, tees down, and then comes into here. 
I would need to shut this off. But because it's connected, hold on, there's a cleaning valve. What the heck is going on here? And then this is closed. I might be able to shut it down through here. I might need to add a valve. I'm gonna start with sanding this edge down. I might need to add a valve. I just, I hate the placement of this. This is just nuts. It's really bad. Oh boy, and it's just it's super hard to work in here. Start with cutting this line. Let's hope these valves even hold. Give as much slack as I can right here. We'll use that tap off. I just really hate the placement of this. I'm thinking of possibly cutting the pipe somewhere else and taking off from there. I guess we could just use this shut off unless that valve doesn't even hold. What a horrible placement. We'll see. I'll try to cut this, but even then, man, this valve looks terrible. Might be time for this stuff to go, man. It's really, really bad. Pipe is cut and it holds. I would love to see if I can cut it right here. Let's get this thing out the way. Also, these two gas pipes would need to be cut. Boy, oh boy. Let's see if we can cut this thing. I would seriously love to cut it right here if I can. Just nothing is straight. Yeah. I think it's time for that valve to be redone too. Let's see where I can I cut it here. Nope. I gotta figure something out. When the space is tight, I just drain into a garbage bag. Alright, I'm thinking of just closing this. Wow, is that handle even on right? The handle's not even on right. So nothing happens if I go this way. Oh boy. What a mess. I think of closing here, then opening this up, and making sure the valve holds by draining through the other side. Well, I, I think it'll still pass through even though there's no refrigerant connected. I'm not sure exactly, but... We gotta cut past that valve. This thing is just a mess, and it looks terrible. I spun it there. Just make sure this thing holds. Oh man, even this thing is hard to turn. No water coming out. Let's see if I open this, was there water coming out? Yes. I close that. And nothing's coming out. Okay, we should be safe to get this thing out. I would honestly love to just cut it here. Cut it here and then attach my line over here. I took your guys advice, I got some braided hoses. I think that would actually be nice, but we might just need to put in a new fitting. Let's cut this out right here. Forget about this, put in something new. Looks terrible. Should be good. No, it should be good. It's not connected to anything else. It got this crazy setup on here. Alright, water lines are cut. Now let's cut the liquid line and our suction line. It's good practice to sand before you cut. Alright, let's cut it out. Just gonna leave these pipes here. I would love to put a cover on there. This is just honestly unacceptable. Liquid line is out. Suction line is out. Looks terrible. Everything looks terrible here. We gotta figure out how this works. So power comes in through here. We got a neutral that was for this hard star kit connected. One here. Then we have a neutral for the defrost clock. That's it, neutrals are done. 
hot line comes in from here and goes into this red. Then this red turns into green and goes into line for this clock. Then it comes out, which is also terminal one. Then it comes out of terminal four. And look at this, it's just a freaking extension cord. No connectors, nothing. Comes out of four into this black. To this black, then it goes through this white wire, then behind the wall. It's gotta go up to the thermostat. And the other wire coming back, comes out of the thermostat, out of the white. Goes through there, white, and white turns blue. White turns blue back here. Then it goes into the pressure control, out of the pressure control, and into the hotline for this hard start kit, and that's how it starts. Power comes into this unit, but really it makes its connection into the defrost clock, out of the defrost clock, into the thermostat, out of the thermostat, into the pressure control, out of the pressure control, into our starting component, to our compressor. Our setup is gonna be a bit different, but let's disconnect all this stuff. Let's pull this unit out and figure out how we're gonna do this. I got the switch off. Let's just make sure we really don't have any power. AC volts, nothing. And it's a copper, like ground. Nothing. All right, we should be safe. Let's rip this thing apart, try to remember how this thing was wired. <sighs> Take it one step at a time, guys. Gotta figure out how we can do this and we do it nice, neatly and professionally. I'm not gonna rush here, but I could do it much quicker, but there's no way I'm leaving this and this huge mess. Man, it's tight. Okay. Okay, guys. As far as this, main power disconnected. Thermostat, whatever, I guess it could stay there for now. And then this. All right. We're ready to go guys we are ready to go just this thing is in the way a little let's get that out Seems ready to come out awesome awesome time to go my friend even though everything looks so messed up here and junked doesn't mean you should do the same. It takes some pride in your work, man. It's a reflection of you. And at the same time, I don't charge the same as these guys. And they're gonna know why when they see when the job is finished. Let's clean this up. Let's do a nice job. Send them a nice big bill. <laughs> oh man, look at this. Disgusting. I got it from here. All right, let's put this in, figure out how we're gonna do it. Also, there's no way this thing came sideways like this. This thing looks bent, man. But we're just gonna have to make it work. Let's hope this thing doesn't leak or this is just, this has gotta be an error from the factory, man. Like there's just no way. Let's see how this fits. This pipe is like sticking out of the unit. Hoping we can get through. Oh man, it just fits. <laughs> it just fits. So it's gonna be a little something like this. Ooh, this water line is strange. This one. So I do a little something like right there. I gotta figure out how I can connect. This goes to here. These two is gonna be easy. I hate that it's bent, man. What the heck? And then this one has to go here. I did get one extra long line. I gotta figure out what's the best way for me to like connect this where it's not like a complete mess.
I'm thinking what I should do is, if I can, maybe elbow out over here, elbow out, and then connect that, and then boom. Actually, I think I might just cut the pipe over here and connect it like that. I think that will look good. This is, might just be a little too tight with this compressor here. I'm gonna have to probably elbow out here and build that out just like that, a short one. The other one I would probably just like loop it around. All right. I'd prefer to build a water line because then we know where everything is. Also, as far as the other side, it's gonna be hard to brace this over here. I think I might just add extensions on the pipes, prep that, and then it'll be a lot easier. Most likely have a better braze. So let's go ahead and start prepping. What is this thing bent, man? Unreal. So what I'm thinking about is putting these connections like this, this brass male pipe adapter, and like that we can make like host connections. And we're gonna have to rebuild it on this side as well. But I think that's gonna be the easiest thing. Let's get that on there. We're gonna use the press tool. Boy, does this thing come in handy. All right. Okay. And then this one, I hope I got space. Ooh, that's a beautiful thing. Let's push that in. Center, beautiful. All right, those two connections are done. And I gotta prep the other water side on the unit and the gas lines. Let's figure this all out. All right, so I got this prepped. This is 3 eighths, then it goes up to half inch water. Then I got this built up to go like this. And then we stepped it up from the 3 eighths again to the half inch. These are water sizes and like that we can connect our hoses. Let's go ahead and braze everything we can except this last connection. And I want everything out of the way. And then we just make the last connection at the unit. And to braze this, then add the Teflon tape and screw it in. Braze, and then we got to braze all this. Let's go ahead and get this started. So this part is done got some teflon tape on there all we would have to do is spin this on and tighten it but as far as here we just got to make that one connection left and i'm using this wrench just to hold it up straight while i make that last connection just in case we don't melt this connection here i'm gonna put wet rag heat blocking putty on here and that should absorb the heat and we should be fine i'm just really hoping there's no leak on here that's definitely a manufacturing defect or a shipping problem either way we got to work with what we got right now there's no way i'm bringing this thing all the way back there's the heat blocking putty and i got a fireproof mat underneath let's get it
everything is nice and prepped that's in there and pretty much for each one we got this hose with a gasket on it using one hand and i'm just going to spin that on and have it connected and that's a beautiful thing and we're going to do the same on this side i threw it in there just to see what the water would look like look at that bent connection we need that loop it would have been impossible to even put this in without this so definitely an awesome recommendation and then the other one comes out there and gets connected here honestly this is awesome for now what i need to do is pipe in the high side and low side i have a moisture indicator side glass and a new filter dryer everything gonna be great connections so let's see out of this receiver this is gonna be our high side all right this is gonna be our liquid line so this is gonna end up here and then down here should be our suction line we're gonna connect from here to here let's figure out how we can do it we got a lot of stuff in the way mainly this all right guys i prepped all the lines here you can see the water line looped in and this one swings around that's a nice nice little curve comes in there out of here started messing around with my bending tool putting this thing to use it's honestly tricky but there's no fittings so i made these elbows so i bent that out and we're going to connect to there then out of here we elbowed out this way like this and up once everything is you know nice and straight this actually looks super nice very very nice setup so we're coming out of the high side going into the proper side glass and then into our filter dryer and it comes and swings out and back into there this honestly looks so much better nice and clean instead of all this nonsense also removed the electrical that was around the pipe because while i was in a braze you know i think it's gonna mess up i gotta be careful in this area but this looks amazing all right guys got my acetylene tank and my nitrogen you want to run nitrogen through the system to avoid carbon buildup inside the pipes i don't have my special regulator because i think it's just leaking i'm just gonna crack this open and just pretty much put it at the lowest setting so i have it hooked up let's connect that pipe and then we'll switch things around but we're gonna run nitrogen through and brace all right i got nitro flowing through if you look at my gauge it's just above zero and below five it's a very very small amount i also have a fireproof mat over here all right guys let's light this thing up There you have it guys beautiful that is a beautiful thing 
right now we're going to pressurize the system with nitrogen and we're going to check for leaks with cow blue micro gas leak detector guys as of right now on the low side we got just pretty much on the dot for 325 and on our high side gauge we are at what is that basically 315 what I'm thinking is I'm gonna wrap it up here for today and we're gonna leave a holding charge if all is good then we know all the leaks were right here but this system does have a leak in it I don't want to start it up knowing there's a leak and there's going to be a problem and stress on a brand new unit. The next thing is, let's climb up here real quick. This is going to be a different wiring setup. So this uses dry contact. So this is the old thermostat cable. There's no way I'm going to just leave it like this. I mean, look at that. Like this thing is just ridiculous. It just goes right in. We're going to need to run the thermostat dry contacts into over here as i was mentioning something 13 i mean 14 and 17 to connect get rid of a jumper and then we're gonna have to redo this line this doesn't reach in here so that can't even be done but basically what really needs to be done is power is going to go into the defrost clock out of the defrost clock into here as far as the pressure control they're already pre-built in and wired and yeah we do you need this to engage the thermostat and we got to run the main line and there's no way that i'm doing such a neat beautiful job with everything water lines and all that just to have this stuff dangling so let's leave a holding charge hopefully that got rid of all the leaks i have a feeling it's not and tomorrow we're going to finish up the electrical make sure there's no leak if there's a leak we're going to have to continue to search and perform startup if there's no leak so let's wrap it up for here we'll be back in the morning we are back with a new day and look at that pressure we have this one at about 325 pounds on the low side we are below 50 psi we got a huge leak in here huge huge leak i went to the electrical supply store we got some materials Definitely gonna have to switch a couple things around here. Main power is here. Thermostat is here. Defrost clock is here. All right, let's figure this out. It's gonna be a completely different configuration. We gotta run a thermostat cable into here and use them as I said, a dry contacts, meaning there is no voltage going through it. And we gotta run main power into the clock and then into the unit. But we might just make all our connections in here. All right guys, while I'm figuring out all this wiring, I got Christian upstairs. He's gonna look for a leak. Christian, you there? I'm here. All right, we're charging it up. Keep an eye out and an ear out. I'm bringing the pressure up right now. Let me know if you hear anything. I do. You hear it? I do. Awesome, man. I'm charging it up. Try to find out where you hear that sound coming from. Use the uh, the solution and spray, okay? Okay. All right, man. I'm trusting you to find that leak. I'm gonna continue on the electrical. Understood. Awesome, man. Let me know when you find it. Bye. Sure. Bye. Bye. All right guys, so the good thing about a leak this large is that 
you might even be able to hear it. When it's those tiny, tiny leaks, man, that's a nightmare to find. Looks like the first place I thought of inside the refrigerator itself, it's leaking. He hears it, he's gonna find it, he's gonna be happy. As far as right now, I'm running the BX and I'm getting things going. Let's set up this electrical while Christian finds that leak. All right, guys, here's a quick update. We found a leak on the inlet of the expansion valve inside the refrigerator at the flare nut. Everything seems to be holding now. We got the system with a decent amount of pressure. It's been holding for a little bit. We tightened it, we checked with the leak check solution and it doesn't seem to be leaking. I think we're probably safe right now. We're gonna let the nitrogen sit for a little bit, but here's an update with the electrical. So right now, here's my two wires. I also need this up a bit. Got the two wires here for the thermostat. Comes in through the side and neatly comes in right here. That looks really, really nice. This is the only part that was tricky for me. Then got the power coming in through here. I added this, so it moves around. I wired this properly, I put all new connectors. So power comes in, feeds the clock, out of the clock, then comes out through here and neatly enters through here and feeds this condensing unit. Everything else is already pre-wired. So we got dry contacts over here. I believe I got this right. It's, this, this is the only part that was really tricky for me. So when the thermostat closes, it sends power through here. If power comes in, goes through here, pressure control, thermostat, gonna come, uh, once the thermostat closes, the power is gonna exit, come out through this blue wire, go through our overload and energize this relay, which essentially, it's a current relay, will essentially turn on the compressor. Everything should be good. Let's give the nitrogen a little bit of time. I'm gonna take a quick break. And if everything's good, we're gonna drop this thing in a vacuum. The pressure actually ended it going up, which is pretty amazing. So that's telling me that there's no leaks. Let it sit for about half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Right now, I just turned on the vacuum pump. Let's drop this thing into a deep vacuum. And I got my micron gauge hooked up. Let's see what happens. Let's give this some time and go take lunch. All right, guys, we pulled the vacuum, came down to about 900 microns. And then I wanted to test it to see if it holds. It just consistently goes up little by little by little by little. And that's indicating that we could still possibly have a leak. What I would do is start with replacing that expansion valve, get rid of those flare knots because when it exp the metal expands and contracts with temperature and eventually it gets loose off the thread, I would get rid of that and put in a sweat connection. So we're gonna braze it and continue with the leak test. But as far as this, I am not gonna start this brand new work of art. <laughs> with a leak in the system i want to make sure that there's no problem so we're going to wrap up this video here but this is how we removed the old condensing unit place the new one in i also put some screws with some washers to hold it in place we redid the water lines we did the electrical everything new and we cleaned up the piping and it honestly honestly is a beautiful thing but unfortunately it is what it is what can you do we're gonna have to end this video here just for the sake of time and to perform a startup we're gonna have to come back and find that leak but if we if everything was okay after the vacuum we would have charged the system make sure the side glass is clear and just flip the switch and would have turned on let it reach 35 to 40 degrees make sure the thermostat is set properly and that's pretty much it there is also one last thing this controller here you would have to set the low pressure cut in and cut out and after that you're pretty much good to go but anyways it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week i'll catch you all next time